In yesterday's video, we created a highly dynamic global transpositioning tool. Today, we want to do the same for chords. So we want to create some kind of global chord track. So we use here a new instrument track and we call this global chords. And we need the note clip, of course. And maybe we use here a synthesizer so we can hear what's going on. So we use saw, we use unison. Um, that's good. Use your band pass, pull this up. Bit of tag, it should be good. That's okay. So in here, we now create a chord progression. We start on, let's say, A. It's exactly one bar long. So that's the root note here. Then we go to one, two, three, minor third. One, two, three, four, it's perfect fifth. One, two, three, and that's the minor seventh. One, two, three, four, and that's the ninth. That's a nice chord. Duplicate this chord, and we have three chords in our progression. And the last one here um, will be the fifth, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the second chord will be an inversion of the first chord. So we pull this one down one octave. We push this up one octave. So it's kind of just an inversion of the first chord, but because we exchange the bass note, it sounds like a completely different chord. So we use the bass notes here, pull this down one octave, and also use the bass note here, two octaves down. So now we have here a nice descending bass line. Uh, pull these down one octave, and also we have here a common shared top note. So it's a nice minor chord progression. It's all in A minor, I think. Uh, at least I see only white notes here. Yeah, there are no sharps in there. Okay, so it's A minor. So on the next track, we want to probably create some kind of um, piano solo on top, something like this. So we could just play on the white notes, on the white keys, because it's A minor. We can also just use here a key filter and use A minor, right? And then play wrong keys on the keyboard and it will be corrected. Uh, but we can also use a note grid. The note grid then goes here to polyphonic mode. So we use 12 voices because we want to use multiple keys at the same time, probably. And we want to correct these keys to a certain scale or to a certain set of notes. And instead of selecting these notes here on the pitch quantizer, so this would be also A minor here, or the white keys, uh, we select here on the left side in the inspector, use note input, and then we use the global chord progression or the global chord track. And now this one becomes kind of dynamic. So it changes with the chord progression on top. It only allows notes to pass that are currently playing in the chord progression in the global chord track. So at the moment here I can use the black keys on my keyboard, but when I hit play, I can't. So when you watch here, basically my keyboard, I'm hitting here A sharp. Is this A sharp? No, it's G sharp, right? And this is not in the key of A minor. So when you see here, when I hit play, it will be corrected. Which means you can just play all the keys on the keyboard and express yourself rhythmically and the pitch quantizer takes care of the pitch. So 
so that's basically for people that like people like me right i can't really play the piano i can you know i have my scales i know certain techniques and so on but i'm not a really good piano player and if you have highly dynamic or complex chord progression here i mean this one is pretty easy it's just a minor um, but when you change this to something more complex and you have more notes and maybe you switch scales uh, so if you if you have maybe a modal chord progression then it becomes you know more complicated to play the right notes on top of this um, so um, this is a great way of actually doing or solving this technically inside of Bitwig Studio it's just one uh, mo mo um, one module inside of the grid actually uh, and use here the global chord so you can also play in a solo and when you later on change the chord progression the solo actually changes with it because the pitch quantizer changes the notes so this is one idea you can do um, there's also something like when you do bass lines of course we can use here the same note grid just pull this down to the polymer and call this bass here right and then you play everything just to a few octaves slower. And everything will be corrected. Um, but you can also just use, let's say, in this chord progression at the lowest note, right? This is here the bass, and you want to play this with your bass synthesizer. So you can also do this. Um, so all we need to do is to use a receiver, note receiver here, and receive all the chords. So all the notes from the global chord uh, track here, we receive here, and we pass this basically through this note grid. So at the moment, it's basically a bass here that's, that's playing a chord. That's not what we want. So in here, we delete the pitch quantize and we use a poly to mono um, thing. So we use this here for the pitch and we say we want to use the minimum value or the lowest signal level is used. And in terms of notes, that's the lowest note. So we flatten out basically everything to just one note and that's the lowest bass note. So that's just this note playing here. So you don't need to define here a different channel and then use a channel filter on a different track. You can just use polytomono and receive all the notes from this chord track and just filter out basically notes based on their value. I think you can also use the highest note here. Yeah. It's just basically this note here. All right. But we want to use the bass note. It's a bit too high, it's still one octave too high, so we can use an octaver here and pull this down one octave. If you don't like the rhythmic of this or how it plays out, uh, we can just use, let's say, triggers. This one and the clock quantizer here. Synchronize everything to 16 notes, maybe some odd numbering here. Play this and use select like this and play. So only when we hit play, we trigger the bass notes. And the uh, note grid here, we can actually use mono voices. I think this would be okay. So this now plays our rhythm, right? And we get the notes from the growth progression and with the polymono we only select the lowest note which is the bass note That's an easy way of um, 
using or recreating a global chord track. It's maybe not that fleshed out like a Cubase chord track with a dedicated interface and with the circle of fifth stuff and so on. But you can see it's just a few modules here I'm using and a bit of, you know, routing. It's not that complicated and it gives you so many possibilities. Um, it's maybe even better in certain ways, like a Cubase chord track. Um, so yeah, this, that's just an, as an idea how you can utilize the node grid and Bitwig Studio to make something like this. Um, I think that's the easiest way you can do this. There are multiple different ways you can realize this or make this even better. Um, because sometimes here, these nodes are not that many nodes. Maybe you have, have only three nodes, and you, but you want to select more nodes, right? You want to play more nodes that you have inside of this chord progression here. Uh, for that, you need a different solution. Uh, but I want to close this video down at this point and maybe um, leave this to another video uh, because I have more ideas for stuff like this. Um, if you have some questions, let me know in the comments down below. Um, leave a like if you liked the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.